Congratulations, Bladesmiths. Your work has elevated you to the third round of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home forges so that you can recreate an iconic weapon from history. That weapon is the Cinquedea. Developed in Italy during the Renaissance, the Cinquedea gained popularity among civilian noblemen. This large double-edged sword delivered lethal cuts in close quarter attacks and was worn on the hip to be swiftly drawn in times of threatening encounters. Derived from the Italian word for the number five, the name Cinquedea represents the blade measuring five fingers wide at the base, which became an excellent canvas for intricate artwork. With functionality in mind, swordsmiths also included fullers to lighten the weight of this otherwise heavy sword. Although the Cinquedea lost its popularity after the 16th century, it has recently made a comeback in the video game, Assassin's Creed. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We're here at my home forge in Kailua Kona, Hawaii on the Big Island. This is gonna be the most challenging thing I've made so far. I don't even know how to pronounce it. <laughs> I'm using leaf spring that I got at a junkyard. I find there's a beauty in taking something that somebody would throw away and making it into something they keep forever. So I'm trying to incorporate the rest of this metal into an integral guard by bending these pieces down. I literally do everything by eye. I rarely measure anything. You know, so it's not gonna be this perfectly symmetrical piece, but it's gonna have the hand felt look. They didn't do it back then on some machine. They were doing it by hand. This acute swell is not comfortable in your hand. It's like the opposite. Got the shape outlined. I got the fuller started. I'm excited to do this. It's day three. Having to cut a hole in the back of my forge took some time, but I feel like I made good progress on the blade. I've got it profiled the way that I want. Feels a lot better in the hand now. So now it's coming to the most challenging part, putting in the fullers. So I've got the blade in the mill, and the milling bit is just skating right over the surface. It's polishing. It's not cutting. So option B is to try freehanding it with a file, and the file is just dancing over the surface of the blade. So option C is to try to freehand it on the grinder. That just looks terrible. This is like a perfect storm of anxiety. Doing something for the first time that's very challenging. How to solve this problem. $10,000 on the line. So I use a smaller milling bit, and lo and behold, it just starts biting into that steel just the way I want it to. It's cutting a slot. Smiths who are sneering at me for not forging them in. Day three, and it's hard to sleep because all I think about is this sword. I want to show to the judges that I'm not afraid of work and that I can accomplish something that I put my mind to. It's the most important step. I'm about to hit a heat treat. I couldn't wait to do it all day, and now that it's time, I'm scared because it could fail. Worst case scenario, my blade could warp, it could crack. And then I would have to start all over again. No warps, no bends. It was straight. <sighs> File tested it. It's hard. So I'm happy. This is still a competition. It's not like the stress is off. Anything could happen at any given time. It's day four. It's time for the heat treat. My heart is beating fast. It's just this feeling, this culmination. It's the climax of the story. If anything is going to go wrong, it's going to happen now. As I'm watching it, I can visibly see it starting to curl over. If I'm going to keep this blade straight, now is the time. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you bend. <clears throat> Boys and girls, we have got a hard, straight blade. I'm happy, I'm relieved. Oh, I can finish now. Now it's just a matter of assembling the pieces, getting everything fit and finished, tight and square and sharp. Day five, this is it. 
Just kind of messing with the guard a little bit, try and make it a little bit more fancy. I'm feeling the pressure because David Baker and Jay Nielsen and Doug are going to look at it extremely closely, and it's pretty nerve-wracking. But at the end of the day, I feel confident that my blade is strong, and I would take it to battle. What do you think? You think he could win? <laughs> I hope so. My son Maddox and I would watch this competition, and now that I get to show him a sword that I made for the competition, we're both in a little dream right now. You proud of your daddy? No. Give me a kiss. The chinkudeo was used for civilian dress, but it served one purpose, to kill. I will take your weapon and deliver killing blows to this big carcass. Dan, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, Dan, on the backhand slash, cut all the way through and lacerated the ribs. On the other edge, it cut the spine in half. The balance of the blade makes it very wieldable in combat. Your weapon will kill. Thank you. All right, Neil, you ready? Ready. Let's do this. Okay, Neil, this is heavier compared to Dan's blade, but the edges are sharp enough to lacerate the spine all the way through. The base and the weight allows for a power slash. Overall, your chinquidea will kill. Good job. Up next is the sharpness test. We will test both of the edges of your blades by delivering a strike across these ratchet straps. Dan, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. My hand will tend to choke up all the way to the guard. This weight distribution basically pulls the blade away. Definitely the sword on both sides is easy enough to slash through and deliver a slice that cuts through all these ratchets. Your blade, sir, will cut. Thank you. Good job. Neil, your turn. You ready? Ready. Let's do this. The dimensions of your handle really fit my hand. Anywhere I go, it stays right where it has to be. Your edge easily cut through these ratchets on both sides. Your blade will cut. Good job. Right on. <laughs> Gentlemen, to test the strength of your weapon, I'm going to chop into this ice block four times with each edge of your sword. Dan, you're up. Are you ready? Yes, sir. OK. Now the other side. I don't see any chipping or warping, so the edge held up very nicely. That guard is so lean that as I'm striking, the blade wants to turn in my hand. Okay. But I did a good job. Nice and done. So, Neil, your turn. You ready? Ready. Now the other side. This is heavy. You see the chingo days with the multiple fullers. And the purpose of that is to take that mass out of it. It's not balanced badly because you've got really thick tang on there. I see no damage. I can't feel any rolling. So it held up beautifully. Nicely done. Thank you. Gentlemen, you've both done fantastic work. But in this arena of competition, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Neil, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Dan, it's that time. Please surrender your weapon. I came here to win. I wanted to win. But Neil made something that was better. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go back to my life. And I'm going to go back to my craft. I still love bladesmithing.
Neil, you picked a hell of a way to tell the world that you're here. Congratulations, you are the Forged and Fire champion, and we'll be receiving that check for $10,000. What are you feeling right now? It's overwhelming. <laughs> Great job. My son is going to be ecstatic that I won. We've been watching this show on the couch last season for to me being on it. Forged and Fire champion, that's me. <laughs> so crazy.